of paper made from pollen that can be printed on multiple times. In a boost to sustainability efforts, NTU scientists have found a way to raise and reprint on pollen paper. Or it could serve as an eco-friendly alternative to the reams of paper used just once in today's world. A pollen-based paper can be printed on, erased and reprinted on up to at least eight times, says the team at NTU. The unprinting will need a dip in an alkaline toner. The paper can then be reused and works well, even with high-resolution colour images. Well, that's according to the team, led by NTU professors Subra Suresh and Cho Nam Jun. Professor Cho is joining us today for more on this innovation. Oh, he's from the School of Material Science and Engineering at NTU. Professor Cho, uh, what is the science behind this process of printing, unprinting and then reprinting? Yeah, thank you very much for having me here today, Wei Su. So the fundamental science in here is the controllability of a swelling, shrinking of the pollen paper. So you say swelling and shrinking. Translate that into how this means we can print on something, undo the printing, and then reprint on. How does shrinking and expanding uh, translate into our being able to do these things? So basically, that's a great question. So fundamentally, in the conventional paper, they don't respond too much with the hydration. But in this particular case, the pollen paper responds to the hydration. By doing hydrating the paper, they can swell extensively and very, very spontaneously. That's why by doing the swelling, you can actually erase the printed ink. Then after that, using the ethanol, you can actually shrink back to the normal paper. By doing that, we can actually using this paper multiple times in a essentially limitless time, you can actually print, then by swelling erase it, then you can actually use it back. I'll as clarify a this for us. Professor, I just read the introduction to this saying that it can be used eight times, but you are saying it's in fact unlimited time. So one piece of pollen paper, we can use it infinitely. Is that in fact true? Yeah, it is true. We demonstrate within the uh, paper, we try eight times. And then in the lab setting, we try more than 20 times. And then it does not really change any property with the paper. So in theoretically, you can continuously use a single paper by doing printing and unprinting. So there's absolutely no loss of quality in that paper, whatever you do, every time that you do it, at least 20 times. That's correct. All right. So in other words, if this pollen paper should be made cost effective and available to us, and also in terms of, say, if we should dispose of it, where that can be done in an eco-friendly way. This is, in fact, a much more eco-friendly way of having paper, using paper in the world that we have right now. Yeah, exactly. Because the wood, you need to actually cut it and then process to make the conventional paper. However, pollen produced by the wood or plant per year, for example, 22 kilograms of pollen from the single tree. And then they are proliferating again and again and again. So in the source itself, as a pollen, it's a very sustainable raw material. But making this paper, is it very costly? No, it's not actually comparing with the wood processing. This uh, pollen paper processing is uh, similar as a uh, traditional sawmaking making processing. In addition, we're using chemical, it's uh, uh, acid, and also ethanol, which is the non-invasive to the environment. So compared with the conventional wood paper making process, this is a much more eco-friendly and simple way to produce the paper. So from your point of view, there are absolutely no drawbacks to pollen paper. So what is standing in the way of this paper replacing paper as we know it now? So as a research group, we can actually make the small scale. And then if we can actually make the large scale, 
processing, which is conventionally a lot of company doing it for the salt making company and processing is very easy. So there is a, a bright future to scale up this conventional process. And then I believe a lot of companies are interested in exciting about this new invention. Well, even so, what you're working with, I presume, is pretty much a prototype. Looking ahead, do you see, do you predict any areas, potential problems that this product of yours might face as you try to scale it up? So, you know, the processing wise, you know, people need to develop it. You know, the whole idea is uh, how much scale up is necessary. For example, if you want to make the paper or, you know, milk cotton of the those paper or the food containing paper, you need to scale up dramatically. We are talking about not the uh, kilogram range. We are talking about few hundred, few thousand metric ton. Once we develop such a process, which is uh, uh, chemical process engineering, once we adopt such a processing, I believe there is a, a very uh, easy way to commercializing this pollen paper. Well, uh, given this is something new, and most people are resistant to change and things that are new, do you foresee any problems persuading people that this is the right material to use if they want to be both cost-effective and also kind on the environment? So, you know, when we started this research a few years back and then we invented this material for the first time, and then people kind of resist about the pollen itself because if you think about pollen, a lot of people think allergenic material. And in this particular case, it's only very few fraction of the pollen species is the response to the allergenic. And in our process, based on our process, we remove all those allergenic components from the pollen. So, you know, stereotype is always matter, but innovation, there is always resistance. But we believe that because of the, this exciting property, and then pollen is known as the diamond of the organic world, and that given that, in you know, a naturally given gift property of the pollen, we believe that you know, this area of invention can continually grow and then very near future, people oh, catch up and uh, then uh, try to make the transportation science. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Professor Cho, Professor Cho Namjoon. He's from the team at NTU, which has just developed a pollen-based paper that can be printed, erased and reprinted on indefinitely.